I feel like this is an issue here as well because people feel like doctor ne kuch bol diya hai that's the final word mm, I yeah. can't contradict it I can't ask him a question I can't be like but kyun I'm not going to go home and research it hormones mess with your body and that's yeah. something that again no doctor here explains anything to you so they are they're tired they have a million and one patients waiting outside and they just don't want to deal with you That's also true well today on the podcast we have an important conversation and one that desperately needs to happen more often what are we talking about today we're talking about ivf and I the ivf journey and uh, i mean i'm not even going to pretend to get into it because i feel like we just need to bring our guest on and yes. let her do all the chili but i did not know this part of your life until fairly recently when someone else brought it up and i was like i must talk to you about it because it's something that I've heard about in passing it's something that like people talk about but they don't really talk about it. Yeah. Right? And you you've been very vocal about it ever since you've gone through the process. Mm. So let's start with you making the decision of going through the pro- process. So I feel like I didn't really have a choice in that decision because I have stage 4 endometriosis. When I found out I had endometriosis, I it was already at stage 4. and at that time i wasn't even married yet and i remember the ultrasonographer just looked at me said aap bachcha paida kar le sab kuch theek ho jayega and i'm just like i'm not <laughs> why is married yet it, it so was you're like wait the marital problems <laughs> haven't started yet exactly. <laughs> let us start fighting yeah exactly and then, then bachcha paida kar me have a kid yeah um but anyway so two years into our marriage um we decided that you know we were ready to have kids and i remember i went and saw dr zaria because he did my like surgery for my endometriosis and all of that um and he said look there's no point in you even attempting to have a kid normally your situation is complicated just go up straight up for ivf so can we what say what ivf stands for oh so it stands for uh, in vitro fertilization so what it is basically there's two types of ivs the uh, ivfs there's icsi and then there's regular ivf so with traditional ivf they take out your eggs and they take the sperm from the man and they just basically like in a petri dish let them do their thing yeah. um for like 5 days 3 to 5 okay, days yeah i get it and with icsi they inject it directly into the egg yeah but that's mm-hmm. usually if there's like an issue with the sperm or you know the motility of the sperm okay yeah wow wait so they inject it in the egg without extracting the egg no no they extract oh, okay eggs. i was yeah, like yeah. No, i was like <laughs> can women like have a break <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that would have been bad thank you for explaining actually, yeah. that you can yeah. keep going yeah, yeah i just yeah. I um, needed the term explained to no, me. No, that's yeah. okay. No, because it's important. I yeah. mean, yeah. I I didn't know what it stood for. Okay, good. Well, I did, but I didn't know the full. Yeah. Answer. So a while ago basically people used to call them test tube babies. That's mm-hmm. what they used to refer to it as. So in fact just today I had someone ask me they're like is that a test tube baby? Does it actually happen in a test tube? And I was like I mean, I don't know if that's exactly it. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's not really like a test tube baby, like a baby being made yeah. in a test tube, but I guess the concept You're is like, quite well, similar. You're like, well, every yeah. doctor has their preference. Yeah, yeah. It could be a petri dish baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um so anyways, I started off my journey um basically now 8 years ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And it took me about 6 years, 5 tries. Wow. Yeah. and um i had it and i i got i started off in pakistan with dr zaria but the problem with pakistan and ivf is that it's a one size fits all treatment so i have stage 4 endometriosis somebody else has unexplained infertility somebody else's husband has you know low sperm count mm-hmm. and all of us are getting the same amount of hormones are getting the exact same treatment which makes zero sense right so i had two rounds here and i realized that it wasn't for me and did you come to this like uh, like you're saying you found out that all of you were having the same kind of treatments you this was after two years of going through the whole process yeah. and then talking to all of these people and realizing and then doing your own research as well yeah of course yeah so this is also something that i find i feel like this is an issue here as well because people feel like doctor ne kuch bol diya hai that's the final word mm, i yeah. can't contradict it i can't ask him a question i can't be like but kyun i'm not going to go home and research it i on the other hand <laughs> i'm extremely i'm like i'm a doctor's nightmare so i Good. google everything and i ask all the questions and i've unfortunately been through so many doctors from my endometriosis and ivf in various countries so because of that i am even more of a nightmare So I will google everything. I mean you say nightmare. I say you're doing it for yourself so that yeah, for your own okay. peace of mind and also yeah, we we talk about this on 
almost every episode where mm. the girls that come and 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 have these conversations with us they're like you know we we're, we're a nightmare for the other person because we are speaking up and we're also like ma- doing the research and we're we're coming out and calling people out on it but honestly if everyone started doing that then yeah. maybe things would be a little bit smoother or a little bit better or at least people would be a little bit more informed about well, what's happening you're keeping happening. doctors on their toes honestly yeah. because especially you know we were discussing this in the makeup room that when it comes to women's health there is such a dismissive mm. attitude there is such a and i had a question you said that all of you were having the same sort of like copy paste copy yeah. paste was this something that they were honest about or it was just like as Ilham said you figured it out kind of through your so conversations so initially they weren't like it's not like something that they tell you and the problem with pakistan and the treatment is that they don't explain it to you they don't tell you aapko itne hormones milenge or you know what exactly you're getting they don't explain any of that so a while like a few months into it because we would all go at the same time you have to get the injections at the same time every day and there's two injections that you get initially so we would go at the same time every single day the same girls and we talk about it and we'd be like woi vile har kisi ko mil riya har kisi ka different issue hai so yeah. i asked the doctor once and i said are we like is there a difference or whatever he said no we have the same treatment for everyone we give them the same hormones the same amount and that kind of didn't make sense to me and i remember finally when i went to singapore for my treatment and they would do one thing and they'd be like oh so is this what they did for you in pakistan i'd be like no they did xyz and they would just look at me like i'm crazy like they'd be mm. like what do you mean <laughs> that doesn't make any sense um so that kind of opened my eyes as well and over there they are extremely transparent about the whole process they tell you every single thing they treat you individually as you know like as per as your condition as should be done yeah Acco- and you get blood tests almost like every other day see your hormone levels and then according to that you get your hormone charts um so for me it was a lot higher than uh, someone who has unexplained infertility which makes sense and that's what eventually worked for me So I can I ask another question? Yeah. Oh, we're literally on a podcast. Yeah. Asking <laughs> questions. I am like not to disturb you, but um I feel like that's really scary that they were giving everyone copy paste yeah. because could they not have sort of contributed to making this worse? First people like if they were underserving the hormones, overserving the hormones like I mean, I isn't it a delicate balance? Hormones mess with your body and that's yeah. something that again no doctor here explains anything to you so they are they're tired they have a million and one patients waiting outside and they just don't want to deal with you and quite frankly over here i met my doctor in the beginning of the treatment and then i met him on the day of my transfer like he didn't i didn't meet him in between at all and mm. in singapore i would meet my doctor every other day he would do my ultrasound himself he would check in on my hormone levels and he would talk to me and draw diagrams and explain stuff to me and that's what made me so comfortable with the process and it wasn't just the the biggest factor about IVF other than the physical getting two injections a day then getting you know another shot a trigger shot and then having that you know your eggs removed and it's a painful process mm. for the mo- and i have a high threshold for pain but it is a painful process and the medicines are heavy uh, because you're taking them orally as well there's suppositories as well it's a lot um and then on top of it you're going through this mental like turmoil along with your physical the disaster that's happening in your body mm-hmm. your mental state is just mush and you feel all alone you feel like nobody can understand what you're going through even your partner even though like mashallah i have like the most supportive husband through all mashallah. of this yeah. um i got really lucky that way mm-hmm. and a lot of girls don't a lot of girls that message me uh, and i still have people messaging me on my blog about um ivf and they go like oh please you know help me explain it to my husband or help me explain it to my mother in law and i've gotten so lucky in that department as well with the support that i've received um but I've lost my train of thought completely. I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> no, but like no, you No, okay, I'll I'll bring you back. I'll bring yeah. you back. So you were talking we were asking you about uh the the process. Yeah. People who want to get into it or don't know enough about it. Yes, you have a blog. Mm-hmm. You were very vocal about it so yeah. we can speak about that too. But uh the process like for me from my understanding apart from just the like you're saying oral medication it's also a lot of injections and for me that's like yeah the thought of it is oh, daunting yeah. because i'm terrified of <laughs> needles uh, and so like every time you told you told me now i'm calculating in my head 6 years that's like how that's many needles a week and how many a month it's two needles a day oh god for about 14 days okay um this is not including the blood test that happens every other day um and then after that you basically get a trigger shot that's the day before they harvest the eggs mm-hmm. 
And then they go and they take the eggs out. They fertilize them for about three to five days. Mm. And then with your next cycle, they put the eggs back in. So right. you can either do that, which is a fresh transfer, or you can do a frozen embryo transfer, which is the one that I had my daughter in. Is They freeze your eggs, they defrost the egg, and then they put it back inside. So that actually has a higher percentage of um, working. Um, I don't know why, but somehow it does. Can I just say how much I appreciate the language you're using? Because you're making it very easy to understand. Because, yeah. I mean, most of the people that I talk to about it, they know absolutely nothing about IVF. <laughs> They've just been told, ke, you know, maybe this is something that you should explore. Um, and so I, I've had a lot of men message me as well on my blog saying, oh, I want my wife to maybe try this out. Can you help me explain it to her? So I have to More make it as... More men. Yeah. Good so, stuff. Yeah. Uh, actually quite appreciative of that because when I was going through my treatment, there was a girl there and she was so upset because she said, I've dragged my husband here from Interior Synth. And she said, my mother-in-law... And there was a problem with the husband. But mm. she said, my mother-in-law refuses to accept it. And my husband refuses to accept it. And please, like, how do I explain this to him? Like, he refuses to even sit in front of a male doctor for him to explain this. She managed to bring him here, but she was she was going through such a struggle. Yeah. And I was like, it's bad enough that you're going through this mental turmoil of bacha chahiye, bacha nahi ora. On top of it, everyone's blaming you for it. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it's not even your fault. There's so many of these and uh, there's so many stories like this and there's so many girls out there that are going through it. And yeah. like and the, the society and the community just doesn't support. And truly, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I have a friend who is a medical doctor mm -hmm. and she was very worried that like, you know, the kid wasn't happening and what am I going to do? And this is someone who has the education to know that like she is not at fault even her husband is not at fault and sometimes the chemistry and the math and the things just have to be in a certain way yeah. for this to happen she knows this still like the amount of uh, exactly mental turmoil mm. and pain and anguish and looking at yourself and saying like what kind of woman am i and like you know literally like what i saw on tv she was saying which yeah. was like women have been having kids for generations and you know obviously like i always say like i speak from the perspective of babies because i have not had a baby <laughs> but i yeah. and i was you know fighting with her where i was just like you know you gotta be kind to yourself because it's but it's society it has yeah. been drilled in us even those of us who opt for to be child free or like aren't married mm. or haven't even thought about kids even we have this nag in us that's like oh this is something you have to do or you're supposed to be able to do yeah. um without any help and it's like hmm. i understand that entirely because yeah. i have said those words to myself mm. despite the support that i have from my husband from my mother-in-law from my father-in-law from my parents like i had as supportive a system as you could possibly have but when I tell you that my brain was in absolute shambles and I felt completely alone, like mm. I felt like zero person around me understands what I'm going through. And the problem is that in our society, people don't want to talk about IVF. They want to pretend like it doesn't exist or that even if they've had a kid through IVF that, you know, they didn't actually do that and it just happened naturally and they were about to go for it. I've had so many people who message me saying, my friend went through IVF and, you know, when I finally went to her because I needed support, she said, oh, essay, you know, like I was about to, but then I had my kid myself, naturally. And they're like, but we know that she did it. So why isn't she like helping me? Like I need help. She can see that. Um, and I've had so many people say that you're the only Desi person we know who's talking about this, which 100%. blows my mind because the number of women that message me, it's unbelievable the amount of people that are going through this and amount of people in my own like the circle of people that are going through this like how is nobody else talking about this it's it's insane to me not to mention just what we've seen with the way the climate the planet and everything is changing mm. this will be more and more of a norm it's already a norm yeah, i feel is. like it's you can yeah. say that i mean how do you feel with that about that kind of language though when someone's like oh no we just like had our Maybe natural. How do you feel about this world natural? Because I'm Honestly, finding it very grating. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. Uh, it is infuriating. I have to say, like I told you earlier, I've had um, random men message me on Instagram. Be like, Aapka bachcha, asli bachcha nahi hai. And I'll be like, what is an asli bachcha? Bhai, what's an akli what bachcha? What the hell is How an do you have akli an akli bachcha? bachcha? Um, ye Islami tarika nahi hai. Like just weird stuff like that, which I just don't get. Because like I said, no, nothing comes into this world without God's will. My child came into this world 
with God's will. Like yeah. also, I mean, she's how, right there. Yeah. human being. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking? Like, how about? can you? What the? Why just, are you just making things up? Yeah. Because you're threatened because you don't get it. Exactly. Or you feel that it excludes men, it's, which yeah. men really don't like. <laughs> it's when again, they're excluded. Again, it's lack of even no uh, an understanding, and anything that they don't understand, their oh, yeah. default is to trash it or yeah. to push back or to in 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 the case of like online demean and like be absolutely horrible human beings about it yeah, yeah. like it's just the the language what they don't realize is that be, because they're behind a screen that doesn't give them a ticket to make hurt another person but the minute you so come for them they fold like cards those oh cowards. i i never got a response i did respond to all of them and mm. i responded to them as nicely as i could because i understand that this is something that people are not aware of and going back to the to the process um it doesn't just end at the first few hormones and the first few injections for your entire first trimester if you if you're lucky enough to get pregnant you're taking a shot a suppository and oral hormones your body is pumped with all these hormones that it, it your mind cannot pro process quite frankly because right. you are just angry all the time you don't want to talk to people if anybody speaks to you you just snap like there is no there's the rational person has left the building basically right. any sort of sense that you made before and it's that's not also anymore. held against you of yeah, course exactly even though you are now carrying a ugly hard for and you're being pumped with hormones if you're not pleasant about it to anyone exactly but like I, I was telling my friend recently that I've never felt better than I have while I was pregnant because endometriosis PCOS these are painful diseases like endometriosis is extremely painful excruciating and I have a high threshold for pain so when I was pregnant it was dormant so that was a time that I actually felt great Oh. So I was like, yes, this is it. <laughs> this is the best feeling in the world. Not just because after six years, I had finally gotten pregnant and had this beautiful girl, but because my body felt better than it ever has. But then on top of it, you have all those hormones and all that weight gain. And then you have all these society aunties going, to are so big? Why are you so big? And has IVF. Tha, wo hai. And it's like, but I'm not Falana. You know, <laughs> I am myself and my body reacts differently. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this kind of newish trend that brown content creators are like, listen, if an auntie or an uncle ever comes up to you and is like, oh, healthy, or whatever you're mm. supposed to be like, yeah, you're my inspiration. <laughs> like, that's supposed that. to, that's <laughs> the new comeback where you're like, Meri toh, my body, your body, same, same, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's I love crazy that, that people yeah. were saying that to you. Were they aware that you? Oh, they said it right that you're going. They said it IVF. straight in my face. And the and the worst part, and I'm laughing about it right now, is um, my father passed away when when my daughter Noura was um, nine months old. Oh, and sorry. this is when people had seen because it was COVID. It was peak COVID. This is the first time that people had seen me after my IVF. And I yes, I had ballooned up. I'm you know still struggling to lose that weight. But the first thing a lot of people said to me instead of saying, I'm so sorry for your loss was, oh my God, why are you so And I'm like, wow. Uh, is there something, like, look, first of all, the I was water. What is to say, is there something in our water? And I was like, yes, yeah. feces. But like, what else is in the water? Because there's something deeply yeah. wrong. Every, every episode. episode. Every yeah. episode. We have an incredible person sitting here yeah. recounting heinous <laughs> things that were said to them, like you, yeah. with, a, with a smile. Yeah. It was like, and I, I'm really sorry that happened, man. It's nine Thank months you. after you get your baby, and then yeah, yeah that's it. Was it was it's still wild to me. I, ca yeah. I can't believe it. And these are people that I'm, you know, I meet regularly. These are people that are my my father's friends, my mother, you know, my mother, my parents' friends, and be extended family and whatever. And this is what you're saying to me? Like, this is what I, I went through, like, years of IVF. I went through mental, physical turmoil. I went through, like, surgeries in order to get to my IVF. And you're like, wasn't you bada? It's not bada, you know? I mean, I, I want to ask a little bit more along the lines of, so you're, I mean, with all the hormones being pumped into you, with all the medication, with everything, your body is going through turmoil, mm. but also mentally. Yeah. It takes a big toll. Huge. I feel like the mental is more than the physical. In fact, I'm sorry I keep going off no, the, no, no, the no, process no, that's, of that's it. This is a, <laughs> this is a thing. Yeah. If, there will be a point where you're going to be reining us back in, <laughs> so don't worry. You're good. So I'm, I'm trying to go back to the process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I loved about Singapore and my doctor, and honestly, he was a godsend, was that Singapore, the government requires certain hours of you sitting with a therapist Ooh. and talking to them and certain hours of meditation 
in order to go through that. Otherwise, you're not allowed to go through the IVF process, which is so amazing to me. And that was the first time I did therapy because in our society, again, it was, you're not crazy. Like, why, crazy why do you need therapy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, why do you need yeah. therapy? And this is like, recently, I feel like after COVID, we've, we've had a lot more of like a wellness, a mental health sort of, you know, like awareness in this, in our society. Right. Before that, it wasn't really there, like yeah. even with educated people. So this was the first time I went to Singapore. I did art therapy, which was like life changing for me. Uh, and I did this therapy session. And then after that, they walk you through every single thing. They take you throughout the clinic. They show you this is the incubator. This is where we tag the eggs. This is where we tag the sperm. So we know exactly who everything is coming from. There's no mix up. Um, and then this is the technician. And this is the person who's going to be like mixing everything together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is where your process is going to happen. And it was just so detailed and so transparent that it put me at ease. Yeah. Over here, I was constantly nervous because I was like, Ab kya wale? And you then know, made like, to feel yeah. bad if you have a question. Yeah. Made to feel like you're disrupting the process. Exactly. By like you're, you're being a burden. And on yeah. the other hand, over there, my doctor would be like, because the, you know, Chinese medicine is so big and they're so big on, um, herbal treatments yeah. it, you know as well so he would be like even though he's a doctor he would be like you know um maybe your husband's uh dna is being rejected by your body because the first transfer that i did in singapore i got pregnant so my hcg levels were higher um but it start, they started falling really rapidly and i got so sick i couldn't sit i couldn't stand it was i was getting you know dizzy it was it was horrible um, so he said, maybe your body's attacking your husband's DNA. So what we'll do is we'll give you a soybean drip. And that na is, a, is a natural product. It's not going to harm your body more. We're not going to pump your body with more medicine. And it'll help fight against, you know, like it'll suppress the, the it's reaction. A very balanced yeah. uh, kind of like take on medicine, which, mm -hmm. which is refreshing exactly. to hear about. The alternative to that is a very expensive medicine, basically, which they recommend in Singapore, at least, if you have a proven case of having, you know, like very high antibodies that right. attack everything. Yeah. In my case, that didn't happen. But mm -hmm. they gave me that soybean drip a day before. Um, and that's the time that it worked for me. Everything just everything fell into place in that one when it has to happen. Honestly, I feel like it's inspiring for, I mean, people, I hope there's someone out there uh, from our society and from from like who's running a hospital or or is a doctor who hears this and is like you know what we can do better yeah we should aim a little bit higher and we should actually take into account even if it's not all the processes yes i understand singapore different country different literally feels like worlds away but uh, uh but they should aim a little bit higher and if, even if they adopt just a little bit like the therapy yeah all of the processes that people go through all of whenever you go into a hospital no matter what even if it's something small it's a lot of trauma on mm. the person on mentally physically it should be a part of the process but you know forget the doctors that's a government requirement which yeah. is amazing which is amazing and over here your doctor barely speaks to you let alone like the one of the first few things that my doctor said to me in singapore was i want you to do one thing every day that makes you happy even oh. if it's the smallest thing for me like sephora is like my my playground yeah. um i wish that was the one yeah. thing that i had access to to make <laughs> me happy also. yeah and i love a good coffee so he'd be like go every day Go get a coffee, go do your Sephora rounds. That's your one happy thing for the day. Concentrate on being in a good mental space. Because it's not just important over here when you go back to the doctor, be like, Vazan kam kar le. Aapka vazan thoda zada hai. Even the skinny girls, they'd be like, Vazan kam kar le. Thoda Literally. Zada. And it makes no sense. Like, <laughs> why Vazan kam kar le? When I was 11 or 12, I moved to Pakistan for a very ill thought out exchange program that my parents did. And we went to the doctor and why are you doing that? Time's up? No, no. Wrap up. Oh, okay. Mm. Let me get over mm. this quickly so we can even cut it out of the episode. Mm. But um, I was like 11 or 12. Mm. Yes, I was a big kid, but like nowhere near. And I looked over and the doctor, without speaking to me, nothing, had ticked morbidly obese. <laughs> And I was like, wow. I mean, I was a chunky kid, yeah. but let's keep it a buck. Like nobody <laughs> was morbid anything. That's wild. But yeah, that's all. Reach out, get some information because I mean, I, we've learned a lot. So I would like everyone else to also learn. So well, it's um, it's actually my makeup blog, but I do talk about my IVF a lot there. Um, it's called Maria's Instagram. And I have multiple women messaging me every day to date. 
uh, about it and I help as much as I possibly can because I know it's a lonely process. And yeah. is that what inspired you to do it, put it on the internet as you were yes. like, someone's gotta. Yeah, because it's lonely and, and you don't know anyone else. I did know people who had gone through it, but they'd gone through it years before. And it was like first time me hogya. I went through six, uh, sorry, five. So for me, it was very different. And I feel like people need help. They need someone to guide them and there's no one there to guide. One of the things that we haven't actually touched upon and I do just before we wrap up want to also touch upon and I was talking to a friend about her going through this IVF, mm. pro, uh, IVF process and she uh, mentioned that look I've put I've done four years of my life I've given to this process and you when, once you commit to it you really commit to yeah. it uh, but the other thing she said was that my entire savings have gone into this process because mm. it's not a cheap process not at all so for all those other women out there who are considering it uh, what should they what what is a little bit of the advice that you can give them just before they start just to make sure that they know what they're getting into so first start, um, doctors do recommend that you go through IUI, a lot of doctors, before doing IVF, which is similar. You get lesser hormones, but then you try naturally with those hormones, similar to IVF. But then they're not actually putting the egg inside you and, and you know, all of that. You have to still try naturally. And I feel like that's such a waste of time because no one I know that has gone through IUI has actually gotten pregnant through that. So I would recommend don't waste your money there. Like go directly for an IVF and... I would strongly recommend that you rem like you take the eggs out before you turn 30. And every doctor recommends that because the quality goes down, um, the production goes down. Uh, so it, it is helpful because then you're going to have to do another, you know, like ed egg retrieval and then that's more money and then more freezing. And that's just hmm. wasteful. Yeah. Right. Okay. I've had my a lot, uh, quite a few of my friends now yeah. have frozen their eggs and I'm sitting here like... <laughs> Maybe I should have gotten on that a few no, years I ago. I honestly recommend it even yeah. in your early 30s. Just yeah. do it. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a, a happy question yeah. to end this on? Actually, I really would love to have you back if you have time because I feel like we didn't even cover everything we wanted. Yeah, but I love that. How did you feel when you met your baby? The first time I'm interested after all you that know, hard work. I was thinking about this today actually and there was such a romanticized version that all these bloggers had that I looked at my baby and my life changed and I was like, this is it and you know, this is my kindred spirit. I literally looked at my child and I was like, what? Is this my <laughs> child? Like, I can't believe it. Is this my kid? And I, that was literally just shock. I was just in shock and I just kept looking at this kid going, this feels so alien right now. Yeah. And it took me a few maybe weeks to be like oh my god i love this thing more than anything in the world before that i was like what <laughs> but you know that it's true it's very true a yeah. lot of moms say this and now more and more are coming out and saying this that it's not all rainbows and butterflies no. and like stars and hearts the minute you see your child no way it takes a while You're like i gotta keep yeah. you alive <laughs> exactly yeah. and i'm like where did you come from like how are you here it was so surreal honestly yeah. it was crazy yeah all right well, thank you for <laughs> being here and telling us uh, these lovely, well, lovely stories and also very educational for everyone out there. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you guys are doing this. This is, it needs to be talked about. Uh, definitely. Yeah. And we will have you back. Definitely. Yeah, uh, like we that. do with all our guests and we actually do call them back. Yeah, we have uh, a repeat coming in right after you. Yeah. So please oh, do nice. come back because honestly, there was so much I wanted to I pepper that, you yeah. with questions yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Maybe All right. we could come back and talk about endometriosis. If yeah, we're that it. would be great. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. And PCOS. Actually, it's my second time saying this on a pod. <laughs> it's PCOS Awareness Month, so it would be nice to No, no, no. We it. should definitely um, do another episode on that. Like a whole separate yeah, okay. episode on All that. All right, well, we'll get you that. Just yeah. leave. I don't know. I get to stay in the chair. We'll switch our community. Do your, do your. All right. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to know more, please see the links below where you can check things out, learn more about from you, see mm -hmm. your story. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about IVF. It is something that is just damn important. There's really no other way to say it. And these are usly babies. Okay, you <laughs> weirdos. And catch you guys on the next one. Bye. What? Bye. Kurt, when you do that, it really throws me off, man. Like Kurt, when you shot it in the mic. So... Kurt, I've told you. It's your job wait to till hear the me thing scream. Ends. Yeah. Then start waving your arms. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Gee, okay. okay, one more time. We're going to do one more for sure. the master. Okay. <clears throat> I know, but like it really does throw me. Okay.
Sorry that you had to see that <laughs> tantrum take place from this That's diva okay. sitting here. Thank you so much for coming on today. If you want to learn more, which you should, the links will be down below. And we're going to have you back. And we're Definitely. About it. Thank you so I love much that. again. Thank you. And Thank bye, you. guys.